Hi everybody, um, this is Matthijs Beckers and Alan Metzger here again. Uh, for the fourth time we are talking about nuclear energy and uh, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to try and keep it somewhat shorter today. Um, we both had the idea that, uh, you know, the 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 episodes were taking too long. Uh, an hour plus is too long and we want to keep to 30 minutes if possible, so... We've, uh, we've prepared four articles for you today, which we are going to d discuss. And the first one is five reasons you don't want nuclear power plants to close in Ohio and Pennsylvania, which was uh, published by the NEI. What do you have to say about that, Alan? And nuclear, nuclear Energy Institute. And uh, yeah. I've actually heard from some people online that have... Uh, you know, accused them of being, you know, an evil lobbyist. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? They're doing what, what all of industry does. Um, and uh, they just happen to be doing it for, you know, a cause that's, you know, pretty good. Yeah. So the, yeah, in, in Ohio and Pennsylvania, we, there's, there are a fair number of, of nuclear plants, especially in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, the, the site of Three Mile Island, which was a two reactor uh, a station, and one of them melted down back in the uh, back in the eighties. So um, that's a famous the, the famous first big nuclear accident, mm -hmm. <laughs> Three Mile Island. And then, uh, so but there are a number of other plants in in that state as well. It's near and then, Harrisburg, right? Three Mile Island. Yeah, yeah, it's near Harrisburg, and then um, Peach Bottom. <clears throat> Well, we have. Um, I could look at my my map over here, and I can perhaps uh, see a little bit easier. So we got Peach Bottom, Beaver Valley, Three Mile Island, Susquehanna, a Watts uh, Bar, and uh, now Watts Bar is down in uh, Tennessee. Oh, so, Tennessee. Um, and then uh, Ohio has Perry and Davis Bessie oh, or Davis, Davis Bess. Bessie. Right, right, right. Um, and those are right on Lake Erie. I actually rode past them on a, a bike ride that I took around Lake Erie once um, a mm -hmm. few years ago. I didn't, uh, at that point, have the foresight or, or uh, it, yeah, foresight, I guess, <laughs> to, to to set up some kind of a tour maybe when I arrived at those plants. And uh, yeah. I was traveling with a buddy that wasn't necessarily as interested in that. But I did get a selfie outside of uh, Davis Bessie. <laughs> Right, at the right. gate anyway, so my bike and the <laughs> nuclear plant. And Davis Bessie's, uh, I, perhaps within the nuclear industry, is is you know famous or maybe even a little bit infamous in that they were the site where they had a reactor pressure vessel head that had, I think it was boric acid that was uh, uh, leaking onto it, and it almost ate through it. Oh, really? Um yeah, they uh, they 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 discovered it at, and you know during an inspection, and it had been that way for a long time. All and, right, uh, and, and uh, just, so, just for the viewers, boric acid is basically used as a neutron absorber in the uh, spent nuclear fuel. Yeah, pool, and, right? and I would need to go look up to make absolutely sure that boric acid is actually what was mm -hmm. leaking, but that makes sense because they yeah. do use it um, uh, extensively in in the reactor to. To provide moderation and, and control the, the fine, put fine control onto the reaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, so finer than you can do with you know control rods and things. So, but they've but anyway, they've addressed was, it. I mean, I take I take that it's, it's yeah. They when they it. found it, they you know they you know shut the reactor down and and uh, repaired it and did a bunch of you know post mortem kinds of things and tried to <laughs> know what was gone. It's also the site where they had. Uh, and a, a near accident that was almost identical to what happened at Three Mile Island. Oh, really? So the <laughs> we shouldn't so be the, laughing. <laughs> well, it's you know it's you know it's I, I think we should be really transparent about all these things. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah of course. And because it's you know it was something, um, and the reason I bring it up that besides that you know we're talking about those uh, the the plants in those two states is mm -hmm. that we. Uh, we and I, I always say we when I'm talking about the nuclear industry, but I, and I'm not really part of that. But but the nuclear industry at the time um, did not have any mechanism to communicate 
information about stuff, incidents like that yeah, yeah, between yeah. the various, the staffs, the various operators of the nuclear plants. So, so in other words, that, that issue happened in the same basic way. And, uh, and, it, and one of the operators, you know, actually identified what it was and, and, and was able to fix it before it caused any, any trouble mm-hmm. um, at that plant. But, um, but it was it was almost exactly the same series of events that, that kind of led up to it. That you know, it's, uh, and so so the the problem is that the, the people at at Three Mile Island had never heard about that, yeah. even though it happened six months before that. So, but isn't so, it is, isn't it true that this whole Three Mile Island uh, thing I, I actually led to the uh, the, 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 the formation of of help me? There's there's in, Inpo. Impo, yes. So you know, so the so there's Inpo, I N P O is a yeah an organization that um, is basically it's a consortium, a communications consortium, and and uh, cooperative maybe is a better word. Yeah, um, they're like this sp- between they're- all the nuclear operators, and, and yeah. they're you know they're all members of it, and they they share all their information. They you know I think they That's finally excellent. realize that they they don't really compete. Right? Yeah. Right. You know, so they share Importance. all their information yeah. between each other. They actually inspect each other's plants. Mm-hmm. They, they come out and they, and they, you know, they'll do critical, you know, you know, critical review of things and, and provide feedback. And so it's, and, and that's really, you know, that's resulted in not only, you know, uh, better processes and procedures for preventing things like through Mal Island, yeah. but also, Lots of improvements that allowed um, nuclear plants to go from 50 or 60 percent exactly. uh, you know, capacity factor all the way up to well over 90. You well, know, so, uh, and it, some in some average. instances over 100, but that's because, over, yeah, because you're because you're you, yeah, you the, just, cap- the capacity removed have, all of the things that keep yeah. you from you know staying staying operative and and uh, and and churning out clean electricity. So and more than you more than you are rated for. Right, right. Yep. In some cases, that's that that can happen, yeah. And then you yeah, get so then you get capacity factors of over one hundred percent. Right, and 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 you also yeah, then what you look at if you look at the the you know industry, um, the delivery of how much energy is coming out of of the nuclear plants that we have here in, in the U.S. Um, it's actually more than it was when we had more reactors running be- because of that. Yeah, exactly. So even though a number of them have been shut down and, and not only the recent ones, but, but ones that were closed in, you know, like Zion here in Illinois, it was, you know, 20 years ago, yeah. 25 years ago, probably. So, so it's, it's really, um, it's, it's remarkable that we're actually getting more energy from our nuclear fleet than we did when we had, you know, but that's uh, a po- that's basically <laughs> yeah. So that's basically a positive outcome of the yeah. meltdown of Three Mile Island. But we definitely definitely learned a lot from that, and there were some really good things that the nuclear industry does. And but but also one of the bad things that, in my opinion, that that kind of happened was that the, the the default position of the nuclear industry from from a, a public exposure point of view was to yes. just keep their head down. Yeah. Right. Just work on being as I, I call it battered wife syndrome. I mean, and you know, and I don't want to trigger any anything or anybody about that. But it's it it it's it's like the 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 nuclear industry is 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 saying if we're just a little bit more efficient, if we're just a little bit more safe, if we could just demonstrate that we're that much better, then people will start to like us, and that just doesn't work. It's so strange, you know? isn't it? Well, people will be nice to us, right? It, it, you know, it is they, basically they, yeah. It's basically right? the most effective and or, or, i wouldn't say most effective but it's 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 basically the most excellently operating industry on the planet <laughs> i mean yeah the uh, the level it of really excellence is. is like sky yeah. high and and they yeah, don't or, get any credit for it <laughs> yeah yeah so um anyway there are uh, all of those plants in the, in both of those uh both of those states are are at risk and mostly that's because they get um, financial pressure um, yeah. from so, so, multiple directions. Yeah, so so what they say here in the article is that Perry, Davis, Bessie, and Beaver Valley are being forced down 
are being forced to shut down unless there is federal in- intervention. And they, they, they say five things that will happen if these plants are shut down and it says 3000 jobs will be lost. And then they, and then they, they add that for every 100 nuclear power plant jobs, another 60 are created in the local community. So that means that there's another 1800 jobs or almost 1900 jobs. So that's a a grand total of almost 5,000 jobs that will be lost. If those, those power plants are lost. Yeah, those, and they talk about that a little bit further down, yeah. which is the direct result of that is that those communities that those uh, reactors are in um, just are decimated. They're just, yeah, they, they, they turn into ghost towns. I mean, yeah, and that, you know. yeah, it says so here, and in, indeed, so small towns will suffer. Mm-hmm. And then it says if these plants close, state and local tax revenues would fall by tens of millions of dollars, according yep. to the Brattle Group. Residents around Davis Bassey are bracing for the impending shutdown, knowing the impact a potential closure could have. The Benton Carroll Salem School District passed a resolution last year in support of a zero emission credit legislation that could help the plant stay open without these contribution local community communities could be at risk just ask small uh, small towns like vernon vermont or zion illinois that have suffered when plants closed prematurely that was exactly the plant that you mentioned earlier zion so yeah 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 that's you know close to home here i mean you know my my niece got married last summer and she she uh she and her husband chose a place on uh on, on lake michigan you know mm-hmm. and kind of out on the beach almost i mean you know it's kind of a cool place to have a wedding and and uh and just right i mean i could have walked in five minutes to zion nuclear plant up the <laughs> incredible and, and you could you know so you lean on you look up there and, and you, you see the you know containment building that's yeah. kind of listing a little bit and i think it i actually I mean some of it's probably even been taken down since then but they've been dismantling that and uh and it's you know and you look at the community and it's just it's 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 horrible and part of it is the fact that that all of that that employment and revenue went away but but another part of it is that the um you know they still got um you know used fuel and casks on site and Mm -hmm. uh, um and and it's all you know packaged up and actually you can you know that the sierra club will do a tour you know of of that area with you know part of the nuclear plant is part of that and they've got people that that you know, could go there and they, you know, they can go see the casks up close, but, but the message that they get is that, you know, this horrible stuff mm-hmm. is, you know, scaring people from investing in the community. And, yeah. and, and they're probably right about that, you know, except for the stuff being horrible, but it probably is scaring people from, from investing yeah. in the community. How, and that's how to change that. Right. How, yeah, to, how right. to make it less scary because it does, it, it, it shouldn't be scary. But as Malcolm Grinson says, you know, as long as the industry and the government keep saying that it's scary, it, it, <laughs> people are gonna people are gonna assume it's scary. Yeah, it's it's yeah, a perfectly it rational rational response. Which yeah, I, I, the, the big thing I think with these plants closing, if they do, is that uh, just you know I, I'm just flabbergasted about how how the the amount of pollution and emissions that will go up yeah. are just not even acknowledged most yeah. of the time I mean, and, so, and, and, you know, and i don't are, and i don't understand why if you have a place where you where you have cited the nuclear power plant and, and even if you choose to decommission it why you throw away the site i mean that's one of those things that i don't get i mean there's <laughs> well yeah. yeah and it's like why do we have to decommission power pl- you know nuclear plants we don't have to decommission anything else yeah and 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 and, 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 and what what's wrong with just decommissioning the reactor and, right yeah i mean <laughs> right just, take, take it down and put something new there i mean yeah there's you know, so but, there's so much equipment there that is yeah. incredibly valuable i mean that's like at least 50 percent of the capital that's 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 tied up in other stuff than you know the nuclear cattle yep <laughs> why yep. why throw that away and 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 you you already mentioned sierra club and we talked about this earlier it is jeff tittle the new director or the director of the new jersey sierra club he was up in arms because the yeah he's of- like a a one-man pr firm for anti-nuclear stuff out on the east yeah. coast 
it's uh so so, so amazing so how the, much press he gets himself i'm not sure how he does that but he's good at it he's he he, he must he's be some guy, somebody's favorite right i mean he's yeah i mean he's made himself available and that's that's something that you know we as protoclear people we don't have much of that i mean <clears throat> you know we you know there's nobody ever asks the you know the pro nuclear expert yeah. you know they go to the anti nuclear ones and and that's you know my bubble speaking a little bit there i'm sure that they sometimes do but but uh, you know, go find a you know an ANS member or, or somebody yeah. that's got some kind of credibility that can you know tell you the other side of that. Story. If you're going to insist on making it a two sided story, mm. then get you know people that are are at least as equally qualified to tell the other part of it. Exactly. So how many how many how many power plants does New Jersey have? Nuclear power plants. Well, I don't. Uh, I think it might just be the one. I'm let's see out here. Um, got. Uh, well, maybe not. I'm having a hard time. I, I don't know which one is. Uh, yeah, it's not a big state. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Um, they're not ordered in terms of states on my big list here. So, um, is Oyster Creek out there? Is that the one they closed? Uh huh. Yeah. Cl yeah. That's that's correct. The Oyster Creek and 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 then Hope Creek is the one. Um, Hope Creek and Salem where our twins that are at the same site. Oh, yes, and, exactly. And Hope Creek was the one that had had ice that formed in the, on the water inlet just when it got really, really cold this winter and it had to shut down for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, because it doesn't, it's, its partner at Salem has a cooling tower, but it doesn't. And so oh, it right. counts on the, the river there to, and, and the, the, it just got too slushy and it wouldn't come in fast enough. So. Oh, right, um, right, right. And out here in the Midwest, where we use, where we get cold weather like that more often, I think they they discharge some water in a way that keeps that from happening. So, so the warmer water that comes out keeps it from freezing. So, so, so the funny part is, and and this is the, uh, you know, this tittle guy. He, he just vilifies nuclear and just you know he he, he says that it's basically standing in the way of you know renewable stuff and energy storage and electric vehicles and i mean <laughs> these are problems right. I, I think that and it's it, like nobody people that you know we we just don't see that i mean you know there are plenty of us you know pro-nuclear people that are you know i would call us realists about yeah renewable stuff and about electric cars. And we've talked about some of that stuff here, but, uh, but there's none of us that are calling for eliminating those technologies. Yeah. None of us. I mean, there's zero people are doing that. And, and, uh, and, and, and we still get, you know, but you know, on the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the fence, people like, uh, like, uh, Mr. I don't know if it's to tell or tittle. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Jeff, Jeff Tittle, he's uh, to tell. Yeah, there's lots of the lots of those kinds of people. And, yeah, you know, and the UCS has people that act that way. You know, I mean, they try to pretend like they're you know really scientific view, but it's really just a it's it's a very very lightly moderated anti nuclear view. Yeah, just he, like uh, uh, who's this guy at Lyman? He he is at the uh, UCS. Yeah, right? he's like a physicist, but it has nothing to do with nuclear or anything. So and, and, and he is he's always Dr. Ed Lyman, and people look at him as a big. You know, as a, as a really as an expert, but all he is is an anti nuclear mouthpiece. I yeah, mean, exactly. And, and he gets paid and, to be anti nuclear. And right? the funny thing is, he 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 gets to attend some stuff at which you know nuclear is being advertised, and he asks yeah, some yeah. questions. And a friend of mine actually met him a couple of, a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, they talked. And the, my friend was being nice to him and. You know that that's <laughs> that's one of the things that I and and this is also on the whole Twitter side where all the pro nuclear advocates are basically right now embroiled in this discussion. You know, uh, I I have a hard time, you know, finding finding the the chutzpah needed to be kind to such a man. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I would have a hard time being really nice to him. I mean, I, you know. I can I, be I, nice. I mean, I could shake his hand and offer him some coffee if I'm I can be mad civil. Him. Right. I, I don't have any trouble with, with, with that. But it yeah, would, that's what it is. I, would, exactly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. You know. I guess maybe that's a good way to put it. But in uh, any case, I'm I'm going to leave this uh, this 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 link here in the description below. Yeah. For people who okay. want to take it apart, 
Uh, let's see for time's sake. Uh, let's move on. Talk about, you want to talk about Alaska? Yeah. The opinion, there are new opportunities for nuclear energy in Alaska. Yeah. So Lisa Murkowski is, uh, uh, she's, she's a, a fairly influential person in the, in the Senate. And, um, one of the two senators from from Alaska, and she's pretty pro nuclear. I mean, you know, and she's a Republican, um, mm-hmm. so that's not a surprise. Um, and she's kind of a moderate Republican if we have, have any of those left. But but uh, but it's um, you know she talks about micro reactors and next generation uh, um, uh, uh, nuclear designs that could could serve many communities in alaska quite well yeah um, people who are now dependent on diesel mainly yeah it, it's and diesel is the thing right that's yeah. there's so much of that and and it's the only thing that's energy dense enough for them to be able to get through a winter yeah um you know and not run out of electricity because you know basically none of the renewable kinds of things that you might use you know are going to be you know very workable in the in the winter up there and that's you know particularly if you're inside the arctic circle you're going to have like very little sunlight yeah um so you don't have uh, any of that kind of thing i have a cat that's asking to come in so <laughs> the opportunity for you know for for you know very small modular reactors yeah um in uh in in that in that state i mean there's there's lots of it i think and um you know i think of uh of of oklo there's uh evinci i think as a little you know that micro reactor keeps getting smaller (laughs) (laughs) i saw it as a wet the Westinghouse, right? That's who that is, right? Yeah, it, it started out as a 25 kilowatt, and then yeah. it was a 20, and now it's a 15 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. So but, the... but in any case, I was already searching for Oklo in the in the in the if there was a mention of Oklo in the article. Um, unfortunately, there's not no. because I really think that Caroline and. Uh, and uh, her husband deserve more Jake, yeah. yeah recognition because they're really pushing it they're really pushing well and they're it. doing a lot of things that are like you know behind the scenes to to help the 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 department of energy and the and the and the NRC even be better at working with um companies that are you know that are that are working on these kinds of things because uh, there's just lots of government involvement that you you, yeah. that you need and, 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 and we're not very good at it right now no and but these things i mean come on these micro reactors that's that's a dream just dig a hole nine nine meters deep <laughs> uh, put a put a reactor in it <laughs> stick a lid on it and either extract electricity or heat um yeah or both or it both. Be both and especially in you know places like alaska i mean that's yeah. that's the ticket how, how many how many people live in anchorage i mean that's the biggest i i don't know off the top of my head it's a, it's uh, i think it's going to be a few hundred thousand yeah i don't think it's a really big city uh, it, it's um, mostly military right i mean they have a big military base um, there they do have bases up there and we used to have the do line the distance early warning it's line, almost three hundred thousand by the way um, yeah, is it three hundred thousand? Okay, that yeah. that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it, and, uh, you, you, it, I think that's a little more than a micro reactor. I mean, for three hundred thousand. Yeah, for them, it would it would be. I, but she's primarily not talking about that. She's talking about the um, remote stuff, you know, mining, really, you know, the, the the fishing villages. I mean, in her, you know, oh, she, right, right. There, there's lots of uh, fossil fuel extraction going on up there. So, you know, <laughs> obviously, and. And you know and those guys, you know they're they're emitting a lot of CO two doing their jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're going to do that anyway, it, you know, you may as well do it with clean energy. Yeah, um, and that's you know that's a step in the right direction. Um, so you know, I I don't think this it's realistic to just say leave it in the ground. Yeah, but I think we ought to do whatever well, we can. I mean, keep and, and from here's using the, any more than we have to. Yeah, exactly. And and here's the thing. I mean, we're doing much more than it than just burning it. Of course, burning it is the lion's share of it all. But but you know, we also need. Oh, we also, yeah, we use it for all kinds of we stuff. We need. Right? We also need oil for medicine, and we need oil yeah. for yeah. for lubricants. The petroleum based society. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 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 if obviously you can you can say well let's all do our plastics 
with corn in the future, but still there's some chemistry that we depend mm. on that cannot be done yeah. with mm. with stuff that you cannot get out of oil. So yeah, yeah we uh, yeah, there's definitely improvement of plastic that we could we could do and that we should do. Yeah, that's but, uh, that's. It c continues to get to be a bigger problem all the time. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, there's a, sorry. So I do think she mentions the NILA, the uh, Nuclear Energy Leadership Act, and that's yes, that's, that's really that's something correct. that we should be advocating for. Yeah, or that we should be advocating. I, 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 and, and she's and she's putting together, uh, yeah, NILA, and she yeah. and, and and that's a bipartisan group with uh, sixteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think it'll get passed. Um, but but it's uh, uh it's not yet and uh so we all should be telling our representatives to to uh, support oh, they, it they should go full bore on, on the new, yeah. new, new and it's, energy and leader it's just you know it, it is some some incremental stuff kind of but it's but it's also you know of having a having a, a high flux test reactor here in the yeah. u.s yeah is, is a pretty important thing and that's that's basically mandated by the nila legislation so Exactly. We really need to get that moving because um, we're behind, you know, the rest of the world. No, 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 no. It's it, but but, it's, but let's frame it differently. You need to catch up. Yeah, we have an opportunity. Yeah, ca ca catching, <laughs> ca catching up implies that you're still in the race. Yeah, right. And, and we that, have an opportunity to re retake that lead. Yes, it, exactly. You know, decisively. I so think. I, I'm not a big fan of no, Rick Perry, no. but Rick Perry said as much when he was, you know, at the Vogel plant and uh, yeah. uh, giving giving I, the, the people who were working there, you know, a good a good uh, patriotic speech. I mean, I'm you know, I'm Dutch. I'm a, I'm 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 an Earthling, so I'm mm -hmm. pretty perfectly fine <laughs> with everybody saying, "Oh, Britain first, America first, and whatnot first. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's you know, we all love our countries, or we're supposed to anyway. Yeah, well, I, I don't care no. that much about it. But but here's the thing: I mean, <laughs> if if you if you do it well, it will benefit us all. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it can it can motivate people in the right way. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and it, um, it, we have to we have to move on to the last one, the opinion piece. Which one is that? That's the. That's the one by Steven Pinker, Stefan A. Quist, and Joshua S. Goldstein. Nuclear yeah. power can save the world. The new, the green nuclear deal instead of the green new deal. What is your take on it? Yeah, and um, I actually read The Bright Future, or A Bright Future, uh, um, just a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I asked my library to get it, and... Uh, so they got it, and and uh, and I read it, and it's it was it was much more upbeat than a lot of the stuff that you read about climate change and right even about nuclear energy, right? I mean, yeah. so so I, I I liked it for that. I can't say that I that I learned a huge number of things from it because you know I am in this bubble, and and many of the things that they talk about are things that I'm familiar with. Um, but uh, it's likely but use, that we know more. Yeah, it's it, but it's it's very approachable, and I and yeah. I think it's you know it looks big, but it's not as big as as maybe you think because it's got a pretty big appendix in it, and mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's not not a hard read, you know. Oh, and here's films. the thing. I mean, and that's that's pretty important. That that's what some people brush over. I mean, uh, we can re we can write and read these incredible nuclear tomes i mean i'm not unfamiliar with that i wrote four of them myself but if a guy like steven pinker takes up the pen and starts writing about nuclear energy which is absolutely not as you know its expertise i mean he's a linguist and yeah, yeah he's right. in a whole different scientific field but he is so well respected and you know he's well he he if he is um, well respected in the active uh, you know agnostic atheist community mm -hmm. i mean yeah. there's hundreds of thousands of people who really adore this man for all that he said about religion and stuff and he is basically injecting a pro nuclear sentiment into that group and 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 that's mm -hmm. one of the things that i thought was amazing and that's why i hope that many more people will do such things you know not necessarily 
uh, talking about nuclear as an expert, but saying, listen, from, from what I gather, right. uh, I'm not a nuclear expert, but I really want to talk about it because I have a firm grasp about climate change or whatever, and nuclear is... Well, and they're good writers. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't say no. that I'm a good writer, but... Joey wants to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> fauna. We love fauna. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the, with these kinds of, um, of articles. So, yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, going on Amazon and, and, you know, writing a good review for the book and, yeah, absolutely. and sharing this article yeah. around, I mean, this was a good, a really good op-ed I thought. So, yeah. Uh, and he just, he's, he's just a really good writer. <laughs> I mean, it just makes a very compelling point. Incredible. And, uh, yeah. And, and, You know, Goldstein is too. I mean, the book is, you know, I think is probably mainly him. Um, I think he teamed up with uh, with Kavis to get some additional expertise. Right, right. To, to, to fill in those blanks. But um, Oh, wait a second. You, was, were t you were talking about Kavis, the uh, bright future, right? Did you, did you read yep. Enlightenment Now? I... Uh, I, I don't think I have actually read that. Yeah, that's that's the haven't. book by Pinker. That's the book by Pinker, uh, Enlightenment Now. I, I probably have good. picked it up and looked at it, and I probably have not actually it's, read it. So. It's more, it's more a kick. He, he tries to make people more optimistic. Mm -hmm. And he says there's, there's plenty of tools. We have plenty of tools to, you know remain optimistic so that's yeah, that's right. pretty good yeah. and, we, and we do and we uh, it just it, but uh you know it's like i said to somebody else the other day they were you know saying well you know and it takes so long you know to to build nuclear that we you know can't get what we need in time and so you know we just need to build renewables and 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 i'm like you know what i mean it, it if It's yeah, it's going to take you time, but but you're never going to get there if you don't start. So no, that's that's you know, it. The UAE decided to start, and they did. And they started, it in six and years. now they're going to have what other people, what anybody else could have, because yeah. they were a totally non-nuclear country six years before that. Yeah, anybody else could have that, and and you know, there's no fundamental reason that they can't. Oh. Right, and and they did what uh, they did what any sane person would do. They looked at. You know, who is an experienced builder and has a finished concept that we can buy, basically turnkey. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they and they basically what they did, what they did was they said, well, Capco, we want your APR 1400. Can you help us build them quick enough? And they did. Yep. yep. And uh, they and didn't it's, reinvent the wheel. You know, not taking, you know, a huge amount of time. I mean, they're big projects. Yeah, of course. You know, it does take. So it's take time, but uh, but it's you know it doesn't have to be so, so, like uh, yeah. Things, so. That's what that's what that's what Kirsty Gogan says. You know, don't don't judge those first projects too harshly. You know, but 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 take those those first projects that take perhaps a little longer than you anticipated and take more money than you anticipated, but learn from them and use the things that you learned right. to to make. The subsequent models, you, you know, you think about it as as you know, you're paying to learn and and gain those skills. Somebody, you know, yeah, so, somebody, I mean, you have, to, you can't get that for free. Somebody said so. Oscar Archer, he he said mm -hmm. you pay for you pay for professionalism, right? And then somebody answered with, well, uh, those people who bought those AP-1000s in the US didn't think about professionalism. And my response was, well, you have to look at it this way. These are basically young professionals, right? They're relatively un inexperienced, but you're willing to take the bet, so you're going to pay them to become more ex experienced professionals. Yes, yeah. and you need to be trained or, or you need to get the experience i mean however you want to state that but but yeah, it's exactly. got to happen yeah and if you don't have people that have that experience then it is going to take you longer you know Absolutely. every time every time yeah so that's that's an investment exactly i want to i want to finish on this note because this is optimism and i i i feel i feel good about yeah this. we need more we need more optimism that's yeah. uh, for sure that's Absolutely. that's uh, So, so, so I'm going to thank everybody for watching. Um, no, thanks. And uh, Joe, Joey is going to say uh, goodbye here. The he's, boys is going like, to say goodbye as well. So yeah. thank you all for watching. Have a right. nice day. Bye-bye. See you.